fun. Well, as predicted here on Friday, uh, every effort is being made by Obama, the Democrats, the special interest uh, ethnic front groups, and the media to race bait. Damn near create a race war in this country. Sharpton's out there. Sharpton being uh, Obama's ear. We'll get to all this, but first, the principal responsibility of the government is to the citizen. Otherwise, the government ceases to be legitimate. No society can withstand the unconditional mass migration of aliens from every corner of the earth. The preservation of the nation's territorial sovereignty and the culture, language, mores, traditions, and customs that make possible a harmonious community of citizens, dictate that citizenship be granted only by consent of the governed, not by the unilateral actions or demands of the alien, and then only to aliens who will throw off their allegiance to their former nation, their former society, and pledge absolute allegiance to America. The Claremont Institute senior fellow... He's also a California State University professor, Edward Erler, friend of mine. He said a radical change in the character of the citizens would be tantamount to a regime change just as surely as a revolution in its political principles. In other words, it's just one more massive effort to fundamentally alter the nature of this society. Now, you may not know this, But in the 1960s, Cesar Chavez, one of the founders of the United Farm Workers, the UFW Union, vehemently opposed illegal immigration, arguing that it undermined his efforts to unionize farm workers and improve working conditions and wages for American citizen workers. Was he a racist? The UFW even reported illegal immigrants to the Immigration and Nationalization Service. Naturalization Service. And in 1969, this is in Liberty and Tyranny, Chavez led a march, listen to this, accompanied by Ralph Abernathy, President of the Southern Christian Leadership Congress, and Senator Walter Mondale, along the border with Mexico, protesting the farmers' use of illegal immigrants. Forty years ago. Now, the status tolerates the illegal aliens' violations of working, wage, and environmental standards because the aliens' babies born in America are, under the current and wrong interpretation of the 14th Amendment to the Constitution, treated as United States citizens. And under the Hart Seller Act, this is the chain migration law passed in the 60s, upon turning 21 years of age, that child can sponsor additional family members for citizenship. So from the status perspective, the pool of future administrative state constituents and sympathetic voters is potentially bottomless. And that is what is at bottom when it comes to Obama and the leftists. But does the 14th Amendment grant automatic citizenship to the children of illegal aliens? The relevant part of the amendment reads that all persons born or naturalized in the United States and I emphasize, and subject to the jurisdiction thereof, are citizens of the United States. Many wrong-headed people, by the way, focus on the word persons. It says persons. The focus is on the word jurisdiction, not persons. The language requires more than birth within the United States. The amendment's purpose was to grant citizenship to the emancipated slaves who were born in the United States and owed sole allegiance to it. Native Americans, who were also subject to the tribal jurisdiction, were excluded from citizenship at the time. There is no legislative history surrounding the 14th Amendment, supporting the absurd proposition that that amendment was intended to empower illegal alien parents to confer American citizenship on their own babies merely as a result of their birth in the United States. Foreign visitors and diplomats are not subject to American jurisdiction. Illegal aliens are subject to the jurisdiction of their home country. 
as are their children, whether they are born in their home country or the United States. 